planet's on fucking fire. Hello, everybody. I'm Nikki, and this is Backyard Politics. Before I forget, please hit the like button, share this on your social media, and please subscribe to my channel. Um, I wanted to endorse some candidates, and I thought, what better way than just make a video, and I'll vote on video. So, you're going to vote with me today. Um, we have four ballot measures that we're voting on, and I'll go over them quickly because a lot of you aren't in Oregon, but number, uh... Measure number 110, I'm voting yes because it gives additional money for addiction and recovery services. So, yes. Then, ballot measure 109, I'm voting yes because it's the first step to legalizing mushrooms. They're going to be testing it. Um, it says, allows manufacturer delivery administration of, I can't say this, <laughs> psilocybin at supervised licensed facilities imposes two-year development period. So, it would allow the manufacturer delivery and administration of psychoactive mushroom um, at supervised licensed facilities imposes two-year development period creates enforcement taxation system advisory board administration fund so i am voting yes on that and then measure 108 um i was torn on this at first but it says Increases cigarette and cigar taxes, establishes tax on e-cigarettes and nicotine vaping devices, funds health programs. Initially, I was like, well, yeah, that sounds like a good idea, right? But to be honest with you, it's talking about taxing the poor again. And with not getting any bailout or any help from Washington, they can fuck off. So they're not getting any money. And I'm voting no. And there might be differing opinions on that one, and that's totally fine. Again, I was torn on it, but that's ultimately how I feel, is we don't get any help, so why should the poor people be taxed? Um, even further, I should say. So, Measure 107 <laughs> is really, really deceitful, or deceiving, because it says, amends constitution right off the bat. So a lot of people see that and they're like, oh, red flag. Nope. Nobody reads further than that, right? The shitty thing is, is this is, it sounds like a wolf pack initiative. Um, I was briefly a member of that and talked to my, my local or my district rep on behalf of wolf pack, but um, I'm no longer affiliated with them. I, I do not have anything to do with it or this being on here just to make that clear. But kudos to whoever got it on here. So it allows limiting political campaign contributions and expenditures requiring disclosure of political campaign contributions and expenditures and requiring political campaign advertisements to identify who paid for them. So result of voting yes, yes vote allows laws created by the legislative assembly, local governments, or voters that limit contributions and expenditures made to influence an election. Okay? It's the first step to getting money out of politics. I am voting yes on this. And when I was reading over this in my voters pamphlet, I found something really funny. Not funny funny, but like ironic funny. If I can find it. Come on, Mark. Here we go. So, the only people that would be in opposition of getting money out of politics and limiting um, the amount of money that campaigns have to be funded by, the only people that would be 
opposed to something like that are people that don't understand it, people that see amends the Constitution and are turned off by it, a lot of right-wingers would be, and people who use their money to influence these said politicians, right? So when I was looking at arguments in opposition to this, because I always talk about studying your opposition, right? We need to know where they're coming from so that we can figure out an argument against it or get them to come to our side or whatever. Um, but I studied the arg I looked at the argument in opposition and I saw that Planned Parenthood advocates of Oregon was against it. And I thought, well, isn't that funny? They said this measure goes too far in amending Oregon's constitution and undermines our freedom of speech protections. This measure exempts all future actions of the legislator, le legislature or any ballot measures regard regarding election contributions and expenditures, blah, blah, blah. You know why I'm so fucking irritated with that? Because our politicians here are funded by Big Pharma. So they're also endorsed by Planned Parenthood. The other thing I found extremely ironic is directly underneath that is the Oregon right to life agrees with Planned Parenthood. They say currently you can let your voice be heard by supporting any political organization with your time and money. <laughs> so basically they were more forward with you than uh, Planned Parenthood was. Well, we want our money to go to people in power so they do what we want them to do. It's just hilarious to me that they printed them like right after each other. Has nobody else seen that? That's so funny to me. And sad that I will almost guarantee you that nobody else has noticed that. So let me see here. That was 107. And I voted yes to that. Okay, I think I got all my stuff in order here. Next, we go on to the candidates. This should go a little bit quicker. Um, so I'm not going to do every single candidate like, you know, soil and water and all that stuff. But in City of Salem for mayor, there has been a petition by um, local av <laughs> activists to write in not Chuck Bennett. So I'm writing in not Chuck Bennett. Chuck Bennett has been shit to our town. He has been crap to the homeless society. He put in a camping ban and then told him basically, if I don't want to see you or anything, let's not deal with it. Uh, he's just awful. So I'm writing in not Chuck Bennett. Not Chuck Bennett because he's the only one on there. That's my vote. And then we have Marion County Clerk. I'm writing in myself because neither one of these people um, represent me. Uh, Bill Burgess has been in that seat for like 15 years or so. And if this is where we're at, then no thanks. So I'm writing in myself because I can. I think I'd be better at it. And I would offer something. Nikki, I'm not going to tell you. Okay, so now, let's see, Marion County Commissioner, I am writing in 
Ashley Carson Cottingham because or I'm not I'm sorry I'm not writing her in I'm voting for her because I have seen her in the public I've seen her um, helping wildfire victims. I have seen her um, at a lot of the protests. She's just, she's all over town. She never sleeps, I swear to God. Um, if you don't know anything about her, follow her on Instagram. The girl is always going, helping the community any way that she can. And I don't think that, I don't, I really don't think that she's only doing it because it's, you know, campaign season. Like she's been out there from the start. I met her like a long time ago once and she she's always out there. So she is my vote, Ashley Carson Cottingham. And then uh so I met with my state rep and I met with him for Wolfpack, right? I just told you guys that to try to get money out of politics. And he told me, and I've said this on this channel multiple times, he told me and the group that I was with that the Democrats in Oregon have been in office for so long that they don't need to be pushed to the left to do anything. They're comfortable where they're at. So, and he's a Democrat. He's a Democrat. He also endorsed Kurt Schrader. And if you know anything about me and have been watching this channel uh, long enough, you know that I, uh, I was a part of Mark Gamba's campaign to get him elected into Congress. And he was running against Kurt Schrader. Kurt Schrader is so bad. Like, he is more Republican than he is Democrat. But he is technically a Democrat. Um, go back and watch my old videos. Like, they're nowhere near as good as the videos are now, but progress. Um, but go back and watch my old videos talking about how terrible he was, he is. And he's still, he's, he's running again. So anyway, my state rep for my district endorsed Kurt Schrader over Mark Gamba after he told me that the Democrats have been around so long that they don't need to change. So I'm not voting for my uh, district rep. I am writing in myself again because the other option is Republican and my vote's not going to a Republican. And this whole story will lead, you, lead me to an end, I promise you, at the end of voting. I know that sounds strange, but it's like a chain of events. Like this district rep endorsing Schrader is just like the tip of the iceberg, it feels like. So Nikki, not going to tell you. I didn't really write that, but I'm not going to say my last name on air. And then let's see here. What else? Next we have Attorney General. Again, I'm not going to vote for either one of them. Um, I don't I, I might write myself in. I don't know. State treasurer. So I looked up on who these people are. We have Michael P. Marsh, Constitution, Tobias Reed, Democrat, Working Families, Chris Henry, Independent, Progressive, Pacific Green, Jeff Goodman, Republican, I'm voting for Chris Henry, who is independent, progressive, and Pacific Green. Neither the Democrats nor the Republicans have any of our interests at mind. It's a big old party. It's one fucking party. So, we go up to Secretary of State. This one, I was actually really excited to vote on because we have... Shamia Fagan, Democrat, Working Families, Kim Thatcher, Republican, Independent, Kyle Markley, Libertarian, Nath Nathalie Paravicini, Pacific Green, Progressive. I'm voting for Nathalie Paravicini because I will show you in one second.
if you look at the voter pamphlet, right, this is her, okay? These are her opponents. It's just generalized, you know, what we're going to do. First of all, Shamia Fagan, I was, I had heard good things about her, but when I look down here at the endorsements, she's endorsed by Ron Wyden, who takes uh, big pharma money. So how are we going to push him to the left? Um, and then Republican, not at all in my views either. So neither is the Libertarian. Then I got to Pacific Green Progressive, and I'm like, please, for the love of God, tell me you have something to offer me. Well, she does. Again, this is... Nathalie Paravicini. Um, so right off the bat, as Secretary of State, these are my priorities. Ensure objective redistricting following the 2020 census results. Okay. Work to achieve limits on campaign contributions and spending. And then she goes on to say Oregon's campaign finance system ranked second worst in the U.S. according to publicintegrity.org. So she's, she's wanting to basically pass campaign finance reform, which is already on the ballot. If enough people understood this stuff, we wouldn't be where we are today. I'm not saying that voting is everything. I know our voting systems are flawed. But my theory and my thinking behind all of this is get them anywhere you can. Get them everywhere you can. So that's why I'm voting. Um. So she goes on to also say, strengthen the electoral process by facilitating the implementation of ranked choice voting. That would be really nice to have. Instead of having to pick the lesser of two evils, we can rank choice our votes and then weed out that corruption right there. Um, shift economic policies to redis redistribute wealth from the financiers to the producers who work, whose work makes our collective prosperity possible. Focus on the needs of small business, the cornerstone of a healthy economy. So I'm, I'm excited about for her. And I was excited to see that there were actually like things in play policies. Like she, she actually has policies as opposed to like every single other mainstream candidate. It's pathetic vote for me because I'm not him. Yeah, but you guys both do the same thing. So what are we voting for here? Um, so let's go on. U.S. Representative, 5th District. I am writing in Mark Gamba. I know Mark Gamba. Again, I worked on his campaign. He has also been very active in the community trying to get things changed. Um, he was one of the leaders in getting our governor to listen and shut the goddamn state down. Even though our numbers have spiked because she reopened everything too quickly. But uh, he's he's got my vote. So I'm writing in Mark Gamba. And then... U.S. Senator. Let's see here. So, U.S. Senator, we have Republican Joe Ray Perkins. No, thank you. Democrat Jeff Merkley. He actually, of all of them, um, he's the most progressive, but that's only in comparison, right? He's done good things, but again, he's a Democrat. You can't get shit done when you're a Democrat. Okay, he's also been a Russiagator, things like that. So hold everybody accountable. Um, Ibrahim Ataher is Pacific Green Progressive, and Gary Dye is Libertarian. So I'm voting for Ibrahim Ataher, who is Pacific Green Progressive, because again, just because Jeff Merkley, in comparison to the other senators, might be viewed as progressive and might actually he does actually do good things, doesn't mean that he's not still a part of that same corrupt system of the Democrats. So this brings me to president. And most of you know who I'm voting for for president. 
but I just wanted to show you this. In the voters pamphlet, if you guys will notice, if you look at Donald Trump, Mike Pence, Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, all of their stuff, there's no policies anywhere. Nothing. Not at all. Uh, Trump says some Antifa scarings out of Portland. Um, and then, I mean, it's all bullshit. There's not a single fucking policy. So, you go over to, all the way over to Howie Hawkins and Dario Hunter. They're the only ones that actually have policies. Now, I have my own issues with, especially Howie Hawkins. So, I'm not voting for him. I, he's a Russia gator, and I just, I don't agree with him. So... That doesn't mean I have to vote for any of those assholes. I am writing in Jesse Ventura and Cynthia McKinney. And there are a lot of people that are voting that way. They just got cleared um, they just got cleared to be a write-in, uh, to be write-in candidates on the, um, California ballot. They are listed number one in Alaska on their ballot. So people reading the ballot will see Jesse Ventura and Cynthia McKinney first. Um, that's a big statement right there. So I'm not saying that he's, they're going to be elected at all, but it definitely puts a protest to what is going on right now versus, you know, with the whole red versus blue circle that we keep getting ourselves into that keeps pushing us further to the right as a country. I'm not voting for authorita authoritarianism. I'm not voting for war. I'm voting for change and to say, fuck the establishment. So those are my votes. And, uh, please be sure to like this video, share it on your social media, Hit the subscribe button and the little bell notification so you know when each video drops. And uh, if you guys, I don't do live streams yet. So if, since I don't do that, I don't get super chats. So if you guys want to tip me ever, I'm, I do have a Venmo account. You can go to Venmo and look me up, Backyard Politics. And I do have a Patreon where you can subscribe to the channel for as little as a dollar. Um, I do have tiers as high as $5, so you can submit an article, things like that. But until next time, Medicare be with you.